Bolivia and Mexico are standing in solidarity with Maduro, signaling no change in diplomatic relations with Venezuela or its government. What does all this mean for relations across Latin America? Michael Shifter is the president of the Inter-American Dialogue. That's a U.S.-based think tank in international affairs with a focus on the Western Hemisphere. Michael, give me your take on things. I mean, we've seen so much uncertainty in Venezuela. We've seen protests in the past. This seemed to happen rather quickly. I mean, did it catch you by surprise? And is this a tipping point? It's been remarkable. Uh, I think um, since Juan, Gu Juan Guaido, the, the the opposition figure, nobody knew who he was three weeks ago. He was basically unheard of. And he emerged as the leader, as the leader, of, elected leader of the National Assembly. And he has had messaging and discourse and uh, a very, very compelling story more than any other opposition leader that we've seen. He's a fresh face. He has directed his comments to the opposition to unify. The un opposition has always been very fractured and divided. Uh, to the military to play its role and not to repress the demonstrations and not to not encouraging a coup at all. He's been very, very wise in that sense. And also to the Chavistas, to those who have been supporting Chavez and then Maduro, who are really suffering uh, these days. And he's, he's making an appeal to them as well. So he's been very, very smart. And I think the international community has wisely followed at his lead, and they see today was a demonstration of the breadth of his support and the desire for some change. People are suffering terribly. Many of them are leaving the country. And so uh, what now, whether this had, the question is, how do we cross this river, go from this point to a point where Guaido is actually the government? And I think that's going to require some negotiation. Clearly, the big issue is the armed forces, which today we learned is, is still loyal and supporting Maduro. Uh, and they're, ver they're an obstacle to making this transition happen. So there has to be worked out some details of some per protection or guarantees for the armed forces. There's been a lot of abuses committed, high levels of corruption. All of those things have to be dealt with. And I think once that's dealt with, I think we can get to the other side of the river. What about the speed of the United States and some of these other countries to immediately recognize him as the leader? Well, the United States, I think, is following Guaido's lead. Uh, Guaido himself said that he was the interim uh, president of, of Venezuela today. He hadn't up until today. And so President Trump's announcement came right after that. And so I think that we finally are at a point where we have uh, a leader who seems to enjoy, he certainly has legitimacy, he's the president of the National Assembly, and he seems to enjoy broad support as we've seen on the streets and uh, I think as, as, as we see in many other, many other areas. And so it was, uh, it, 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 this, is the, this is what's been missing in Venezuela, why things have been so stuck uh, up until now, Maduro has been unpopular for a long time, but there was never an effective unified opposition. There seems to be now. Whether it will last or not, we'll see. The opposition is very heterogeneous, very diverse. It's made up of a lot of different groups, and it's, it's kind of hard to hold it together. Uh, but so far, Guaido has been able to do that. Talk to me about your greatest hope and your greatest concern as you look at what's unfolding there, because we've seen in the past, I mean, Egypt is a prime example where people get enthusiastic because it's democracy, and then boom, it goes in another direction. Talk to me about, uh, you know, opening, opening your eyes and looking at this, the full picture. I mean, which direction can we go there? Well, I think this is, there is a positive scenario, but it's going to require some time and going to re require, require a lot of negotiations and talks uh, with the opposition and the government, and especially military officers, high-level military officers associated with the government, to try to make this nonviolent and try to make this as peaceful uh, as we can. My, the worst-case scenario is that this really collapses and there is massive uh, violence and confrontation uh, with the Chavistas and uh, with the opposition. And that's, you know, that's a possible scenario. If they push too hard and there's no negotiation, they just feel that the military should just, uh, should just kind of surrender and give in and support Guaido, that could, be, that could be very, very complicated for Venezuela. So I think this needs to be sort of worked through, and there are a lot of very, very complicated issues. And, and you're someone who watches the region uh, closely. Uh, are we seeing a shift? I mean, it seemed like there was a lot of, uh, in the region, there was a lot of uh, leftist leaders. Now we see Bolsonaro, uh, Mauricio Macri. It seems like there's maybe the region itself tilting in another direction. Is that is that fair? I mean, I think there's some of that, but I think there are enormous differences. If you look at the difference between Bolsonaro and Macri, uh, the gap is, is pretty huge. So I think it's, uh, we should be careful about putting all of these leaders in the same uh, category. 
but certainly what we see are governments that are much, much less, less sympathetic to, to Maduro and harder on Maduro. We see one government that went left with Lopez Obrador, and uh, as we saw today, Mexico is backing uh, Maduro, and Mexico is a very, very important country. So he has Mexico on his side as well as Bolivia and Nicaragua. But um, I think most moderate governments, I think Vizcarra in Peru and Duque in, in Colombia, these are basically basically centrist figures. They're not. It's not a hard right ideological position. I don't think. Michael, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for your insights. Thank really you. Appreciate it. My pleasure.